Welcome to the Washington Stormwater Center's video series on the science of stormwater. Today's topic, bioretention. Bioretention is the process of removing pollutants from stormwater runoff by filtering it through sand, compost, and other organic matter. Sometimes known as a bioswale or rain garden, these filters can remove significant amounts of petroleum, heavy metals, sediment, and other pollution from stormwater. Research scientists at WSU Puyallup Research and Extension Center, NOAA, and others have been studying the effectiveness of bioretention for a number of years. Most recently, they discovered that runoff from a major highway could be cleaned with a simple mixture of 60% sand and 40% compost. Before filtering, coho salmon exposed to the runoff resulted in 100% mortality. After the filtering, they all lived. Currently, the WSU scientists are conducting two research projects on bioretention. The first is a long-term field test of bioretention for urban stormwater management, specifically an array of replicated bioretention cells, similar to miniature rain gardens, that have been constructed in an ultra-urbanized watershed in Seattle. We're conducting a two-year study of bioretention performance over time, um, where we're taking runoff from the busiest section of roadway in the state of Washington, Interstate 5, right by the Ship Canal Bridge behind me, and we're, um, we're piping it down into a system we built where we have 12 bioretention soil columns. And um, in those drums we have, um, they all have an under drain and they have a 60% sand, 40% compost by volume mixture, which is the standard bioretention soil in Washington. And so to that we've added plants, um, Pacific nine bark, as well as fungus, Strafaria rugoso annulata. It's a white rot fungus that grows in the mulch layer that sits on top of the soil. It's commonly known as a wine cap mushroom. It's an edible wood decomposing fungus. And so we're monitoring the, um, the water quality as it comes into each of these drums and as it goes out. So we're looking at conventional water quality parameters like pH, t um, total suspended solids, a suite of metals, heavy metals like uh, zinc and copper. We're also studying uh, toxicology perspective. So we're looking at uh, toxicity to zebrafish embryos, uh, which are a little bit more sensitive um, metric as far as the, the whole stormwater picture. So we're looking to see whether plants in particular, but to a lesser extent fungi, uh, have an impact on the hydraulic conductivity, or the ease with which water can move into the soil, um, whether that has an effect. Um, and if we can use that information to better gauge the lifespan of a bioretention system. The other current bioretention research that is being conducted at WSU in Puyallup is being funded by the Washington Department of Transportation and the Federal Highways Administration. We know that highway runoff can be very toxic to aquatic life. That's why these agencies are working to understand how roadway runoff treatment technologies can remove toxins and how best to use bioretention to protect water quality. On a stretch of State Route 518 near SeaTac Airport, DOT has been field testing a best management practice they call CABS, or Compost Amended Biofiltration Swale. The lab scale study at WSU in Puyallup is a smaller version that can be manipulated to mimic varying roadway conditions such as slope, length, and plant types. By changing these parameters in a lab setting, we can test differing conditions for effectiveness at removing common runoff pollutants. So what you're looking at here is a 50-foot section of a biofiltration swale. Now in the field, they're over 100 foot long. However, we had to dial that back a little bit in order to get it to fit in the greenhouse. We're trying to create like a cross-section of what the field swales look like. And using that cross-section, it's four inches, and we put around three inches of compost on top with a natural swale substrate and we throw on a mixture of grass seed that's actually like the DOT grade grass seed. The length is important because as opposed to bioswales or swell infiltration columns that filter stormwater vertically, these actually perform an interaction on the water horizontally. And so surface area is uh, extremely important. The longer the bioswale, the more effective the stormwater is treated. However, at a certain point, the water is going to be basically of suitable quality to enter aquatic ecosystems. So we want to know how long do these bioswales actually need to be. 
There are three goals right now for this project. The first goal is to investigate how biofiltration swales actively treat stormwater runoff contaminants. The second goal of this project is related to the question of how universal is this treatment? The final goal of this project involves ways of improving the Washington State Department of Transportation approach to biofiltration swales. Using this information, we hope to provide decision-making criteria that they can use in order to more effectively implement this better management practice throughout highway systems in the Northwest. For the results and other information about this study, visit our website at wastormwatercenter.org.